Stick around until the end to see how you can use my link to get 40% off an annual subscription to Nebula. This is Avi Loeb, an Israeli-American theoretical physicist and professor of astronomy at Harvard University. He has published over 700 scientific papers and authored several books, has been a featured guest on numerous radio and television programs, including The Daily Show and 60 Minutes, and has been quoted in publications such as The New York Times and Scientific American. But before 2017, outside of academia, not many people had heard of Avi. Until this. This is Amuamua a Hawaiian word meaning a messenger from afar arriving first. It made headlines around the world when discovered in 2017 because it was the first interstellar object that had been detected in our solar system. That is, the first thing that we've observed coming from outside of it. It's an elongated, cigar-shaped object that measures about 800 meters long and 80 meters wide, and it was traveling at an incredible 315,000 kilometers per hour. But despite the hundreds of artist impressions found online, this is the only real image we have of it. A speck of white amongst a field of streaky stars. With no detailed images and little time to take any as it sped past Earth, scientists weren't totally sure what Oumuamua even was. But there are clues. Astronomers could see how much light it was reflecting. They had an idea of size and they could measure its rotation and speed all data that can be used to classify what it is and what it might look like. But amongst that data were anomalies, data that didn't quite add up to what astronomers would expect to see from an asteroid or a comet. Despite these anomalies, most scientists agreed that it must just be some kind of natural phenomenon that we are just not used to seeing. All scientists, but one. Avi Loeb had a very different theory and thinks that a Muamua might be something far more intriguing. An alien spacecraft. This theory has caused a lot of controversy in the scientific community, with many people dismissing it as pure speculation. But Loeb has some pretty compelling arguments to support his claim. A Muamua didn't seem to just enter our solar system at random. It was traveling on a highly unusual trajectory that couldn't be explained by any natural phenomenon. It came from a unique place in space, which is like a fixed point in the galaxy. It moved in a strange way because of the way the sun moves in relation to this point. It's like a buoy in the ocean that stays still while the water moves around it. Loeb thinks that there might be more alien objects like a Muamua out there, forming a sort of network that helps define a shared point of reference in space. The unusually large variation in brightness measured from a Muamua means that the object is highly elongated, about 10 times as long as it is wide. Its cigar shape is very unusual for a natural object, and not at all typical for comets or asteroids, which are usually irregularly shaped. Loeb believes that this shape is a deliberate design to reduce drag and increase efficiency during interstellar travel. The path of a murmur differed from the predicted trajectory based solely on the gravitational pull of the Sun. While the deviation was minimal, less than 1%, it held great statistical significance. This type of behavior is typically displayed by comets, which generate thrust by evaporating ices on their surfaces when exposed to solar radiation. But if a murmur had received this boost from cometary outgassing, the significant amount of evaporation should have produced a visible cometary tail, which was not observed. A Muamua was much brighter than expected for an object of its size, about 10 times brighter. Loeb thinks this could be a sign that the object is made of a material that is not found in nature. In his book Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, he suggested the highly controversial view that a Muamua could be a discarded piece of alien technology, like a light sail or a probe, sent by another civilization to study other intelligent life forms in the galaxy. Whilst all these reasons do lend themselves to Loeb's alien theory, it has been met with skepticism by many in the scientific community. The reason why it's probably not aliens is its trajectory around the sun was completely determined by gravitational forces. 
How do you know? Because we know, we calculate this. While the idea of extraterrestrial technology is captivating, most scientists believe that natural explanations for a murmur's properties, such as outgassing or thermal forces, are more likely. Or, as suggested in a recent study, a murmur's acceleration was due to the release of hydrogen gas as the comet warmed up in the sunlight, and, while less exciting, is a more sober explanation. As for its strange, elongated shape, this could be the result of natural forces, such as tidal forces or collisions, rather than the result of intentional design. There also hasn't been any direct evidence of artificial technology detected from a murmur, such as radio signals or emissions of artificial light. And finally, there is the issue of Occam's razor which is a principle that suggests that when there are multiple explanations for a phenomenon, the simplest one is usually the correct one. Nevertheless, Loeb has maintained that his theory should be considered until a natural explanation for a murmur's unusual properties is found. Despite the backlash he received, Loeb continued to pursue his hunt for extraterrestrial life, but this time, instead of looking for it in the depths of space, he set his sights on things much closer to home. Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon, or UAP, is the newest term for UFOs. As silly as this subject might seem to many, it's a subject that is being taken very seriously by many governments around the world, including the US government. And with testimony from countless expert witnesses such as Navy pilots, private and commercial pilots, high-ranking military, police, politicians, and even astronauts and former presidents, it's no wonder. Though, in order to back up such claims, empirical data that's available for public consumption is a must, and yet is hard to come by, often due to the classified context of the reports or the fleeting nature of the events themselves. Fascinated though by these claims and frustrated by the lack of scientific data available on UAP, Loeb took the matter into his own hands, and in 2021, he launched the Galileo Project. Loeb and his team have had millions of dollars of private investment, which it will use to deploy multiple instrument stations in hotspots around the world, using cutting-edge technology and rigorous scientific methods to collect and analyse data on UAP. It will use cameras and telescopes to observe and analyse unidentified objects in the sky, using AI to dismiss natural or known man-made objects like birds or commercial aircraft, and highlighting those that don't fit with prosaic explanations. The project also aims to develop new types of instruments and sensors that can detect and analyse anomalous phenomena, such as unusual patterns of light, materials or signals. And, of course, it's the data that is key, with so many UAP witness reports being dismissed, even reports from such credible observers. Without the collection of quality scientific data, they are nothing more than stories. Avi Loeb is undoubtedly brave for putting forth the idea that Oumuamua could be an alien craft and applying his time and effort into researching UAP, risking his reputation as a well-respected scientist and his tenure at Harvard. Science needs bold, outspoken people like Loeb, not because his theories are definitely true, but because he has the courage to explore them and say what others may be afraid to. His ideas may be controversial, he may be completely wrong about Oumuamua, and he may waste millions of dollars building UAP detectors that only catch birds and aeroplanes. But his scientific approach and open-mindedness to this subject is important, if not essential, in expanding the frontiers of scientific exploration. And if he is right, well, that would be pretty cool too. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you liked the video. And, and if you did, I was hoping just to keep you for one more minute just to tell you a little bit about how you can best support my channel. Um, and in return, get something pretty cool, like money off cool. So stay with me for exactly one minute and I'll tell you how. So for those of you that are familiar with my channel, um, you'll know that I haven't been here for a while. And, and the truth is I had a burnout, not just with YouTube, but kind of with life in general. But um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a bit better now and I'm making videos again, so that's good, yay. But in order to keep my sanity, um, I've had to simplify my videos. And a lot of that means reducing me being on screen because setting that stuff up 
to film myself takes a lot of time because a lot of the things that I want to do, I can't film myself and I have to get a team in and that makes it really hard and takes time and money. And, and I do want to make those kind of videos again, but in order to get there, I need your support. So first off, Patreon. Um, thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. You've always sent me lovely messages and keep me going. So thank you so much. If you want to support me there, link below. I'm not gonna stop you. But if you want to get something pretty cool in return, like a 40% off annual subscription to Nebula, then this is for you. Nebula is an amazing place, a streaming service set up and run by some of your favorite creators. It has a ton of exclusive content that you cannot find anywhere else, like me ripping into Quake 2, something I wouldn't have been able to make on YouTube because it gets a bit sweary and would have 100% be demonetized and age restricted. And behind the scenes bonus content, and with my link, you get access to classes where creators tell you how they create. But the path to me being able to do this was not a straight line. And there are literally hundreds of your favorite creators on there, also making stuff that you can't find anywhere else on the internet, like Wendover's Logistics of X, or Neo's How the Twin Towers Were Built, or Patrick Willem's Night of the Coconut. No ads, no algorithm. And every penny Nebula makes goes right back into supporting your favorite creators. So to support me, to support this channel, and to get 40% off an annual Nebula subscription, yes, 40%, that's like $2.50 a month, then click on the link here or in the description and you support me. And you get money off and you support me. It's win-win. It's a no-brainer. Anyway. Thank you again, and until next time.